This is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to upgrade your HP Z400 power supply. Um, so if you've never been to GreenPCGamers.com, you should definitely check it out. In the description of this video, we're going to post the HP Z400 gaming computer and other upgrade blog page. Um, so you can click on it. Um, now, that'll, that'll be a really nice and important page for you because we'll post the power supply model that we use as well as a link to where you can purchase the very important 24 pin adapter uh, to make that ATX power supply work in your HP Z400 workstation. Now this is also a prerequisite video for us uh, because we plan to do a bunch of upgrades um, to our Z400 uh, to optimize it for gaming. Um, and one of the first steps is to upgrade the power supply so we can install a higher end graphics card in our Z400 workstation. All right, so let's get to our actual install. Um, we are using a HP Z400 uh, refurb workstation. Um, these systems are going on, they're almost close to 10 years old now. Um, and then we're using an EVGA 700B, 700 watt power supply. So the power supply that we install, I mean, you don't necessarily need to use that particular power supply. Um, you know, any ATX power supply that has a 24 uh, pin connection on it and a four pin for your CPU uh, should normally work in the HP Z400 workstation. Now this cable is really, 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 really important, okay? You will need this cable um, to install in between your 24 pin power and the motherboard uh, because HP uh, did something goofy with their pin out on the 24 pin connection and you will need this adapter to actually get the the new ATX power supply to work. If you don't use this adapter, um, you're gonna get a bunch of red blinking lights and you won't get video and the system won't turn on. So um, go to greenpcgamers.com. We're gonna link you to where you can purchase that cable. All right, so put your system on its side. Uh, first thing we need to, do, need to do is remove the old power supply or the existing power supply. All right, so we're gonna remove our air baffle. Now, as you can see, this is the 400 watt or the, the four, they say 475 watt power supply. And it's just not quite enough for what we plan to do with it. All right, we've got our 24 pin power that we need to unplug as well as our four pin CPU power that we need to unplug. But first, um, oh, as well as the optical drive and the hard drive power cable. But first, before we do that, we do need to unscrew our power supply module. Now that's gonna require four T15 screws in the back of the chassis. Um, or you can use a flathead if you don't have access to a T15. All right, and then once you remove those, you can go ahead and unplug all the connections. We'll go through them. And so we're gonna start with our CPU power, then we'll go to our 24 pin, our, our hard drive, and then our optical drive. You may have other peripherals installed. I mean, be smart about it. Just unplug whatever you installed to the, you know, to the cables in the power supply. All right, so the power supply comes out pretty easily. There's a good amount of space inside the chassis. All right, so there is a little bit of a problem when swapping with an ATX power supply. The new power supply that we plan to install is smaller than the existing HP power supply. Um, and what makes things even worse is the screw holes don't line up. So we had to get kind of creative about how we securely mounted this new power supply into the chassis. And so, um, what we have decided to do, and this is something that we've done on some of our other videos, is we've used these 3M command strips. Uh, get the, because they're they're super strong, they're like super Velcro, um, other than you can only really install them one time, otherwise they lose their grip. But we only need to install this power supply one time. So we're going to put two of the large command strips on the power supply. Um, each one is supposed to be able to hold 16 pounds. So really, I mean, you, you could get by with one, but we're going to go go kind of big and uh, make sure that that power supply is as secure as it can be without being screwed in. All right, so we'll put our command strips on the power supply. Now the top command strips 
I pulled the sticker off here. You don't actually want to do that. You should just leave the sticker on and then when you're ready to actually install it, then you'll pull the sticker off and securely mount it to the top of the chassis. So we'll, we, we get smart here and do that with the second one. We'll just push it on like the top one there. Don't, don't pull the sticker off. All right, so now that the command strips are on, we're ready to install it. So we're gonna pull off that top sticker because when we pull off that sticker, we'll be able to securely push the power supply module into the top of the chassis, and then it will allow the, the command strips to you know push together kind of like Velcro does and create a nice secure bond to hold our power supply into place. So we removed our stickers, and we're gonna go ahead and put that power supply right into the top of the chassis. Now you can't, or you could, but we didn't flush mount it to the back of the chassis because we we figured if it was inside a little bit, we'll we'll get a little bit better grip to the top of the Z400 workstation. All right, so we've we pushed that in. It feels secure. I mean, it's not as good as screwing it in. Remember, I mean, there is a little bit of movement on it, but it will it will work for you. All right, so here's that really important 24 pin adapter that we have. It's 24 pin female to 24 pin male. This one was made specifically for this workstation and it fixes our pinout issues so that we actually get the proper power connection to the Z400 motherboard. All right, so just install that, plug it into your ATX power supply and then that will plug right on to the motherboard. Again, if you don't use this, um, it's not going to work. So you do need this adapter and not any old 24 pin to 24 pin adapter. Um, use the link that we provide on our blog page at greenpcgamers.com. Again, that'll be located in the description of the video. All right, now we need to plug our four pin power in and the four pin does not require any additional adapter. So you can just use half of the eight pin that's provided if you buy an EVGA power supply. All right, now we're gonna plug our hard drive back into place so we can get power to that. And then after that, we are going to install or plug in our optical drive. Now, again, this is a prerequisite video because we're gonna upgrade our graphics card um, this power supply has a couple eight pin adapters um, and it it has enough wattage to you know do any of the newer graphics cards or at least what they recommend like an RTX 2080 Ti graphics card they want you to have a 650 watt power supply installed so the 700 watt technically will meet the needs depending on what else you install inside your system um, ideally if you're going to go with a really high end card like that you probably want to go with an 800 or higher watt but you know, the manufacturer does say 650 watt. Okay, so optical drive is plugged in. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and kind of clean up our cables. You can get some zip ties or you know whatever you, you want to clean up the cables. Um, then we need to put our uh, plastic baffle back into the chassis. And we will put our side panel back on. And that's that's pretty much your install. Again, that that adapter that we show you in this video, that is crucial. If you if you try to avoid that or not use that adapter, um, it's not gonna work. You're gonna get that red blinking light on your power button, and uh, you'll be you'll be probably commenting on, hey, it's not working, it's not working. But yes, you need the you need that adapter. All right, so this is what it look like it looks like when it's installed. There is a little bit of a space, so it's kind of a hack job, but it does work. Um, when you plug your power cord into this definitely we're going to go back to that we definitely recommend kind of holding that power supply tight into place because the command strips are good but they're not perfect okay so um you know put your finger in there kind of hold it secure and then plug it in once the power cord's plugged in you should be good to go all right so if this video was helpful to you please consider hitting the subscribe button on the youtube channel that helps us out big time um, also check us out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and we do monthly giveaways on our greenpcgamers.com Facebook page. Um, so if you like free stuff, 
uh, definitely give us a like on Facebook. Thank you so much for watching.